A steam plant using a castle steam boiler part 6, fitting the condenser parts together. I drilled a hole in the copper tube, tapping size for 3 8 by 32 threads per inch, and threaded it the same. In this clip I'm screwing in a check valve. Not that I need a check valve, in fact I'm going to take the ball out of it. But check valves are very useful if you need to add another exhaust inlet to the condenser at any future time. All you have to do then is remove the nut on the end of the check valve and fit a double union to take another pipe inlet. For this application I only need one exhaust inlet, so I could have used a 90 degree elbow. The position of this exhaust check valve is critical. It needs to be exactly in line with the exhaust outlet on the engine's baseboard. I need this check valve to sit lower on the top of the tube, so I need to machine away part of the hexagon. This is a very simple job, but you do need to think it through before starting the job. I've screwed the check valve into a union nut, and this in turn is held by the jaws of the three-jaw chuck. I could have held the check valve by the threads, but that's not a good idea. From experience, this is a better method. All I now have to do is use my parting tool to remove some of the hexagon and therefore shorten the fitting, which will make it so that the check valve sits lower on top of the condenser tube. It's quite important not to be too heavy-handed with this job. Now I need a 3 h by 32 threads per inch die in a die holder to extend the original thread closer to the newly cut hexagon part. I used my Barco spanner for this, and yes, it marked the paint, but that's not a problem because I'm going to remove the paint. In this clip you can see that the alignment is now perfect. The next job is to figure out where to drill the hole and put a fitting to connect a pipe to the inlet on the chimney. To make sure the hole was in the correct position, obviously it has to be in line with the check valve, I used a short piece of mahogany to make sure that it was also in line with the chimney. Not good engineering practice I know, but it works for me. And it will work for you if you practice and learn to calibrate your eye. And believe me, it saves a lot of time. At the other end of the condenser I need to drill a hole to accept a boiler bush that I have. And the hole is 7 sixteenths of an inch in diameter. But after I drilled the hole it was a bit of a tight fit. So I just used a small grinder in my Proxon motor tool to slightly enlarge the hole. Here's a view through the tube from one end, and as you can see, everything is in line. A simple alternative way to make sure the parts are in line is to use a surface gauge on a surface plate and scribe a line all the way down the tube. Do it whichever way best suits your current skill level. As long as all the fittings on top of the condenser are perfectly in line, well, that's all you need. The time has come to prepare all of the parts for soft soldering. There's no real need to silver solder this component because it doesn't get very hot at all. And it is of course not a pressure vessel, it's always open to the atmosphere. I used to make and sell condensers for miniature steamboats, but it was a bit of a non-profit making exercise so I stopped doing it. I'm going to use a combination of soft solder paint known as Fryer Lux, some ordinary flux and a stick of plumber's solder. I'm giving the inside of the tube a very generous coating. When this Fryer Lux paint melts it will run downwards towards the end caps as I solder them. I also removed the discs and coated these with Fryer Lux paint. So by the time I heat up this piece of copper tube complete with all the fittings and the end caps there will actually be an excess of solder inside the tube and it will be a good and very strong joint. As there is a 2BA bolt sticking out of the end, it's going to be very difficult to keep it level on the bench for the soldering. So I've used an engineer's clamp to hold everything in place. The two discs that I made were very, very slightly undersized, but this is not a problem because the gap will fill with solder. The first part to solder in place is at the top of the tube in its current position. This is the boiler bush into which the drain valve will screw. As this is soft soldering, not silver soldering, I don't need that much heat, it certainly doesn't need to glow red. As soon as the solder melts, I can start brushing it into position. This brush contains some Fryerlux paint complete with the flux and I keep dipping it into a pot of water. This allows me to get a very neat joint. 
To make sure the solder runs everywhere, I'm also applying some plumber's solder. This is a stick of plumber's solder that I'm holding in my left hand. Because there's plenty of flux around the joint, the plumber's solder flows very well. But to keep the joint tidy, I constantly brush it with the paintbrush. And in this clip you can see that the solder is also tinning the inside edge of the brass end plate. Once I'd finished soldering one end, I let the soft solder cool so it was solid. And just as with the other end, I fitted an engineering clamp to the bolt on the other end of the condenser's end plate. I'm not showing this in as much detail because the process is absolutely identical. As you can see, plenty of flux has been applied, plenty of soft solder, and now I'm cleaning it up with the paintbrush. Periodically, I apply some more heat to make sure that the solder is still flowing. But don't go mad, you do not need to cremate this part. I can't do anything else now until the condenser has cooled, so here's a shot of the condenser cooling. I wanted the job to cool slowly. I didn't quench it in water, because this could have caused a weakness in the solder joint, so I just let it cool in its own time. I think these joints will be fine, and I really don't think they're going to leak. Once the condenser had cooled, I put it in position up against the back of the engine. You will notice that the short pipe fits perfectly between the check valve and the pipe on the engine. I've also put some feet in place, two pieces of brass angle, which is OK at the moment, but I do have to shorten these feet, because if you look underneath the baseboard, you will see that the entire engine is supported on some feet. These will need to be removed when I fasten it to the baseboard. And the baseboard is arriving tomorrow because the owner's built it and he's going to turn up with it about lunchtime. And once I have this baseboard, I can get to building this plant in earnest. I need to make some modifications to the boiler just to calm it down a little bit, make a new steam turret, fit a whistle and some other things. It's going to be quite interesting. This entire condenser is going to be painted exactly the same colour as the engine, so it should look quite good when it's finished. That's it for this episode. There's not a lot more I can do until I get the baseboard. So all I can say is stay safe, stay well. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.